hey guys uh, welcome back uh, in this video i want to talk about uh, uh, the design of uh, various parameters uh, uh, you know that are used in case of fdm system so uh, in this particular series okay which is related to the design of fdm system uh, we had first considered that uh, especially we moved to 4g because uh, uh, we wanted to produce a high data rate for which we increased the bandwidth right so now the design of bandwidth what is the uh, what is the constraint for this okay so in case of 4g the bandwidth considered is uh, you know 20 megahertz as the max case right so how, how did we arrive at this i am just giving uh, some pointers but there could be many more factors why that is considered uh, you know one is uh, the available uh, spectrum uh, okay uh, when uh, there was an option for uh, uh, the spectrum we need to see how much uh, free spectrum is there that is one aspect and and we are moving to wideband right because earlier it would be you know just in terms of kbps uh, i mean kilohertz or it, it, it is max you know three megahertz like that in earlier generations that was the bandwidth but uh, suddenly we are going for you know to 20 megahertz bandwidth in case of 4g so this is a wider bandwidth and uh, many of the components especially all of components your antennas and even many many other things we need to many other filters we need to design for a wider bandwidth right so there is a more challenging and uh, um, for wider bandwidth some of the rf components uh, are uh, um, more unstable so considering that also into picture we sh we we initially you know i think uh, we did not go for much higher bandwidth than this okay so 20 megahertz we got some clarity uh, in terms of uh, uh, many components design and as well as in terms of the spectrum availability okay now we'll move to the next aspect see when we consider this uh, larger bandwidth right what was the problem severe isi because the simple duration was very low very low so to mitigate this uh, uh, problem uh, we went for uh, shorter bandwidths so the entire big bandwidth you know we wanted to divide into multiple shorter uh, sub bands so by that way the simple duration increased uh, to a, a greater extent and we were able to mitigate isi okay now the thing is that uh, here we considered one particular design that is what if you know we are dividing the entire bandwidth into uh, sub bands something like this okay then the design which we consider with frequency division multiplexing for which we wanted multiple filters and we need to have a guard band in between these two bands all of this created uh, a problem in the sense that there were a lot of disadvantages with this scheme and this was not more efficient one so we considered another design which is you know OFDM right in which, in which case we were dividing the entire bandwidth uh, into sub bands and these sub bands uh, are overlapping and orthogonal right so these two sub bands uh, were orthogonal to each other because of which we were able to pack more and more sub bands uh, within the existing bandwidth and there were greater, greater advantages okay but to implement these sub bands okay uh, we needed multiple local oscillators if you want to perform it in the hardware uh, but that is costlier and as well as bulkier so in order to reduce these things uh, we brought a mechanism where we can uh, you know perform these uh, operations in the baseband itself using uh, IFFT operation okay these things were all explained in the previous uh, videos in this particular series I'm directly you know jumping into the conclusions and drawing the points which are required over here so we mentioned that in the baseband we can implement an equivalent uh, operation using the IFFT okay when we decided that uh, we wanted multiple factors one is the value n which is IFFT size okay so the second one is we wanted uh, because this baseband is in the digital domain and wherever we this local oscillators and these hardware were in analog domain so we need so we had a digital to analog converters where we had uh, you know the uh, the sampling rate where we need to we need to decide sampling rate that also we got to know you know we need to use n into delta f delta f is your sub band size 
okay so also like these subcarriers right uh, what is the frequency how do how should we you know um, divide these uh, subcarriers so the subcarrier frequency cfk it was taken as k into delta f okay delta f is the uh, subband size so this is another thing which we had considered so now what did we do like uh, we considered uh, when we considered 20 megahertz okay let's say this is 20 megahertz uh, we said that we need to de design the low pass filter right we, we will have low pass filter so low pass filter will have certain roll off so uh, that low pass filter might be uh, you know something like this so there is a filter roll off that's why we cannot use the complete 20 megahertz but we need uh, uh, you know uh, we need to have some uh, bandwidth um, we need to keep some bandwidth uh, which will cater to this filter roll off so uh, you know the effective bandwidth uh, in this case is just 18 megahertz okay so the 1 megahertz on each side is is uh, you know uh, left out as it is to, in, in, to to take care of the to take care of the filter roll off okay this is actually the design in case of 4g uh, so but um, um, you know nowadays okay um, uh, we wanted to have a better uh, design for this low pass filters where the, they do not consume a lot of, uh, of uh, you know bandwidth uh, to compensate for the filter roll off so basically in the sense that uh, nowadays there are filters uh, which which have very less roll off so that uh, this particular overhead of one one mic one uh, megahertz on either side has brought down to a very significant value in case of 5g okay so that is uh, another point which means that uh, you know in case of 5g so in case of 4g let's say even you know i will mention the subcarrier subband size which is 15 kilohertz if you use this for 18 megahertz um, you know 18 divided by 15 kilohertz 18 mega divided by 15 uh, which we will get it as uh, 1200 right 1200 subcarriers uh, which means i mean each uh, uh, okay this many subcarriers whereas now this bandwidth is considered such a way that now we gonna get once one to seven to subcarriers which is actually uh, you know we have another term which is called PRB physical resource block uh, uh, it is equal to 12 subcarriers okay in which case this can be represented as 100 PRB this can be represented as 106 PRB okay so this was the case in case of uh, 5G I hope this is also clear in case of uh, now mainly we are talking about uh, uh, you know these factors right we came to these factors but uh, we need to see how we designed the value n the value of an fft size we know that fft size um, you know should be power of 2 then we can implement using an efficient algorithm that is ifft or fft right basically this is dft if it is a power of 2 and if you are implementing using certain algorithm then it, then it is a ifft uh, block see here in 4g it, it was it is considered to be maximum 2048 okay but in 5g and all we had even considered 4096 the thing is that this takes lots of uh, signal processing time okay so in 15 years back around 2008 uh, time or 2010 time when this was defined when 4g was defined the kind of uh, dsp chips where these uh, ift ift ifts were implemented um, they were taking pretty much good amount of time okay uh, we wanted much more faster processors or uh, much much more faster chips but uh, uh, but over 15 uh, for a period of 15 years uh, we have such a kind of chips and we are able to go for higher uh, uh, you know a 50 size as well 
but this itself was challenging but this was implemented in case of 4g and that is one reason you know why uh, we can consider uh, the maximum to be uh, you know 2048 and and also we saw in earlier videos why it should be a power of 2 to the power of uh, uh, n um then what else is the constraint okay it, actually everything is interrelated see the moment we say you know uh, 20 megahertz and uh, bandwidth maximum and when you know out of 20 megahertz only 18 megahertz is used and if the sub carrier spacing is just 15 kilohertz and uh, then what is going to happen we have 1200 carriers uh, you know to perform the IFFT size the next power of 2 for this 1200 is actually you know 2048 okay so 1024 uh, uh, will not uh, be sufficient so that's why that is also one of the reasons so the design of uh, uh, n uh, the, the value of n is chosen to be 2048 okay now the value of n is fine okay now here i am mentioning you know uh, the um, here i am mentioning the sub carrier size as 15 kilowatts i will come to this design okay how how is this chosen i will come to this in a separate video okay for now we will take it as 15 kilowatts um, then what else is the design so we spoke about cyclic prefix right uh, in one of the videos what should be the design of this cyclic prefix first of all you know we will have some certain uh, high si right uh, we spoke about this and uh, there will be such certain isi okay i'm going to write so now after increasing the simple duration now the isi is actually restricted to only uh, one symbol right uh, within one symbol so this uh, is the overlap uh, for the lth path and this is the first path okay the lth path is uh, uh, you know uh, shifted such a way that when uh, first path is sending the second symbol we have some small portion of first symbol from the lth path is overlapping that is where we are seeing the interference right so or isi so how do we to eliminate this only we introduce the concept of uh, cyclic prefix so these are the two things uh, two ways which we can design uh, this particular uh, cyclic prefix okay one is last samples we can take uh, uh, and place it in the beginning another one is uh, all zeros actually the name cyclic prefix came because uh, you know the last samples uh, we are uh, you know cutting it and uh, placing it in the beginning okay in the, in the beginning here um, so in a, in a cyclic way that's why you know we are uh, calling it as cyclic prefix so another design is all zeros uh, this is uh, mostly not used in most of the cases in our wavedm system this is the one which is used but how do we exactly choose this cyclic prefix right one is as i'm telling here this particular delay okay this is the tau d right this delay depends on this delay spread and that much of overlap will be there here right so minus cp length or cyclic prefix length should be minimum it should be equal to uh, delay spread tau d okay or it should be greater than this greater than or equal to this, this is one of the design constraints now what if we make it more will it help yeah it might help but uh, uh, the thing is that if we had more of these uh, uh, things then this is like a overhead right in the system so this is going to reduce the uh, data rate of your system so that's why this will not be uh, you will not see that uh, a too much of this value is uh, uh, used it will be used uh, which is sufficient to mitigate the mitigate the multipath effects okay but in case of uh, you know 3gpp spec okay as per 4g even we have one is a normal uh, cyclic prefix and another one is extended cyclic cyclic prefix okay so this will be uh, a smaller uh, uh, size whereas extended cp will be of a larger size so where uh, you know if you see that 
uh, your delay spread is uh, on, on the higher side, then the extended cycle prefix can be used. Okay. So I hope we got the clarity on how to design this even CP. Uh, you know, uh, there, there would be an important question in the interview, right? Like uh, usually we use the cyclic prefix uh, uh, as as I mentioned over here. Okay, that actually, if, if we do like this, how does my receiver uh, uh, design look like? Will it be simpler? Will it have some advantages? That would be one interview question. Okay. The another one is, let's say, if in spite of this, uh, uh, you know, cyclic prefix, I will add all zeros. Then what are the pros and cons at the receiver design? Okay. We'll see, you know, those would be a, a different kind of, uh, I mean, uh, those can be covered in a different video. I will try to see how to bring, bring them. Uh, but uh, I hope you got a clarity on how to, uh, you know, design the cyclic prefix, right? Uh, what are the design constraints? Um, with this, I will wind up the video. In the in the in the uh, in, in the upcoming videos, I will try to cover more design uh, design aspects, especially I think uh, this the design of uh, uh, you know the uh, circuit spacing. If you are looking for more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. I will be there. Bye.